Well, good day, everybody. Today we're going to talk about photographing bees, and I'll talk a little bit about doing some video. Um, first thing, a little disclaimer I want to point out is this is just my method of doing this. There's a hundred ways to do this. Um, mine's probably the least preferred one because I hand hold, and most people do prefer to use a tripod when doing this. Um, but I'm going to talk about both of those methods. And so if photographing bees or even getting a little bit of video of some bees, that's something you're interested in, stay tuned and we're going to discuss it. So all the photos and the video you're going to see in today's video is taken with the 40 to 150 lens with some extension tubes. I decided to use that instead of my actual um, macro lens just to show you guys that you don't need a macro lens to actually do photography like this. Now you do have other options. You also have on the cheaper end if you're using an Olympus or the Micro Four Thirds system, you have the 30 millimeter Olympus, which is the cheaper end. This actually has a full frame equivalent of two and a half times magnification. Um, downside about this one, very short focusing distance. Another option is the 60 millimeter from Olympus. Also has weather sealing on that one. And the next step up from that would be the 100 millimeter. 100 millimeter being the best, especially for if you're wanting to do videos of bees. Obviously, that's the expensive option, though, so it's all going to be up to what you want to actually spend on the equipment used for doing this. And I will also put all this equipment in the description. Now, if you're using a telephoto lens like I am in this video, another option other than the extension tubes is to just get yourself a Raynox 250. Now, if you've watched some of my other videos, I use that a lot. It works great. Um, this particular one for the bees, I like the extension tubes better because it's actually less magnification. And when I move this all the way to the 150 millimeter mark, I can actually get a really long focusing distance, which obviously helps with bees, especially if you're doing bees in flight and, and doing the video. Put it back to the 40 millimeters, you obviously get more magnification, but your working distance is shorter. Now, if you put the rain ox on there, it's more magnification, but on, on either end of that, you're gonna have less working distance. So I just prefer the extension tubes when I'm doing bees. Again, if you have a dedicated macro lens, this isn't gonna matter.
Okay, so first I'm going to discuss the tripod. This is a method I tend to only use when I'm doing video. Um, all the video you see in this uh, of the bees was actually taken yesterday, and it was extremely windy yesterday, and I still managed to get some video. Obviously, that's not ideal, though. If you're going to do video of bees, you want to come out on a calm day. You don't they, they don't stop moving. So if they're moving, plus the bushes or flowers are moving, it just makes it that much more difficult. So make sure it's a calm day. Make sure you have a bright day, nice full sun. I come out midday. I have this bush right here on my fence. It's just covered in bees. Perfect for practicing this. Now, this is a cheaper end tripod, so it actually does shake a little bit, but not too much. And I actually like using the gimbal that I use for my wildlife photography for this because I'll leave these loosened up and I can actually just very steadily track the bee as it's going around the bush. And with this setup, I use autofocus because the given that this is a ket lens, the manual focus on it, it just really isn't great. It doesn't respond that well. Um, if you're using a dedicated macro lens, you'll probably have better luck using manual focus. But on this one, I'm kind of just forced to use the autofocus. And as you can see, it, it still works. The videos I got yesterday aren't the best. But uh, the way to improve that would be coming out on a calm day and also using a dedicated macro lens. Another thing to point out if you're using a tripod is the use of a focusing rail. I don't have one of those on here right now. I do own a cheap one, but the cheap one just doesn't work for this. Because if you're using a focusing rail on a tripod for something like bees that are moving all the time, you're going to want one of those focusing rails that just allows you to very smoothly go back and forth. The one I have, I have to twist these little knobs and it's jumpy and it takes you a while to kind of adjust it so it just doesn't work unfortunately the ones that are nice and smooth like that are the more expensive ones i will put a link to one in the, the description if it's something you want to get into um but that's you do have to spend more money on that the cheap one just doesn't doesn't work now that said i do all of mine with the camera off of the tripod that's just how I prefer it. So I'm not going to talk anymore about the tripod because I just don't prefer that method. I prefer handheld. Handheld is just like any other insect macro. You're going to hold your camera up. You're going to move back and forward. Uh, dedicated macro lens. You can't actually get away with some autofocus, but you're still going to have to kind of go back and forward to nail and get the eyes in focus. Now, I don't use any flash. So if you're doing this early morning or late evening when there's not as much sun, 
you are going to have to use a flash. If you're using a flash on bees, you are definitely going to increase your keeper rate if you buy a more expensive flash with a higher re recycle recycle time. Um, my flash actually is a really cheap one. It doesn't have a good recycle time, but it doesn't matter because I actually prefer the look of the natural sunlight. So that's what I do is I come out here, I put this on the longer end, and there's a couple of bees here now. I just I actually use my viewfinder because it allows me to watch the bee with my other eye. And basically what I do is I learn their habits. So these plants here, see if I can get one of these in view here. I don't know if you can see all the buds, but these, these little seeds here start as flower buds. Um, and if you, oh, be right in my face. Now, if you learn their habits, you'll notice that they'll go to one and then they'll kind of fly up and go to the other one and then fly up and go to the other one. And once you sit here for a while and you study them, you're going to be able to get ahead of them with the camera. So don't try to just go up, get your guy in focus and take a picture. Know what he's going to do. So if he's on one of the flowering pods or areas of the plant and you know he's going to move to the next one, go ahead and get your focus on that next one and then watch with your other eye so that you can, as soon as he starts going over there, you start shooting. And that's when you're actually going to get some photos of them. So you're basically predicting what they're doing. You're getting ahead of them. And it's, it's kind of like the pro capture that's in some of these cameras, except you're doing that pro capture yourself. You're not using the camera to do it. And I imagine you could use the pro capture in camera, especially if you were using a tripod. Okay, so here's something that's very important to talk about. Freezing the action. Now with any insect macro, which if you guys have been doing any of it, you'll know that everybody uses a flash and they use the flash to freeze the action. Well, I don't use a flash with this. I shoot these bees midday, full sunlight. So what do I do to freeze the action? Well, I raise my shutter speed. I actually typically use a 1-1000 or a 1 12 50 of a shutter speed and that's to freeze the action my ISO I put on auto if you've watched any of my previous videos you know I don't I don't worry about ISO this you don't have to keep it low uh, with modern cameras plus the um, denoise software out there now it's just not a big deal and especially if you have light in the photo anyway it's not going to be that bad the noise anyway it just won't be bad so keep your shutter speeds really high, especially if you want to get the bees in flight. Now, when I'm not doing the bees in flight, I will actually drop my shutter speed to like 1 3 20th of a second. And that's when I'm just getting them sitting and, you know, getting the pollen and the flower. Um, I don't mind dropping the shutter speed. That's about as low as I'll go, though, uh, without a flash anyway. But to freeze the action, you're going to have to up the shutter speeds. And all these photos you see that I took, a lot of them were also yesterday on the windy day, so having that shutter speed high also froze the action and allowed me to actually get a lot of photos of these bees.
Well, real quick, I was just editing my video and I realized I didn't talk about aperture at all, and that's actually quite important. So, when I'm at the higher shutter speeds, I typically won't go any higher than f8, and if needed, I will go lower than f8. But typically, f8, even at the higher shutter speeds, when I'm out in full sun, is, is fine. Uh, again, that's with auto ISO. Now, when I'm at the lower shutter speeds, I will actually push it up to f11 or even sometimes f13 if I have enough light out. It, it's all going to depend. So you're just going to have to kind of play with that. Um, my camera is set to where the ISO won't go higher than 6400. So there has been times where it's either too early in the morning or I get into a very shady spot in the plant and my exposure exposure is just not good enough so i do have to open up the aperture to get more light in but uh again it's just going to depend on where you're at but f8 usually you're going to be safe there lower shutter speeds f11 you should be safe So let's talk about the bees stinging. It doesn't happen. <laughs> I've been out here, I'm like literally, you probably saw on the camera a couple of times. I don't know if that camera will pick them up or not, but the bees were right here in my face. I'm not worried about it at all. They're literally all over this bush. Um, you can see the video I got of it, and it's they're just they're everywhere. There's also some hornets and uh, paper wasps and some other wasps I haven't seen. There's some sweet bees. Basically all kinds of pollinators. There was even a couple of butterflies, but they were they were in my neighbor's yard, so I couldn't get a photo of them. But if you're here, you can even be moving around in the bushes. You, your head can touch the bush. Your hand can touch the bush. There was a few times I grabbed the bush and there was bees crawling on my fingers. So camera overheated and cut off my video, so I'm going to try to close this up now. But basically, don't worry about the bees stinging. Just don't swat at them. Don't be mean to them. You'll be fine. Um, and that really is about all there is to it. It's, you know, you move in and out to focus. Even if you're using autofocus, you can use a cheap kit like I have here. You don't have to have an expensive macro lens. Uh, Olympus does have those three great options if you do want to choose an actual dedicated macro lens. The, the 30 millimeter with a short focusing distance. You'll be fine. The bees aren't going to bother you when you're getting that. They're that close to them. They're so busy doing what they do anyway. Trust me, it's not going to bother them at all. Um, and other than that, man, it's really about practice. Just come out here, learn their behavior, learn how to get ahead of them and predict what they're going to do, and just keep practicing. You'll be amazed at just, just coming out to the same spot three days in a row and just sitting there for an hour trying to photograph the bees or even take video of them. It'll blow your mind how better you are on the third day and how much more you're able to predict them. And uh, that's pretty much all there is to it, guys. Other than that, for the most part, it's just like any other insect macro. If you do have any questions, let me know in the comments. Uh, all the gear I use, plus some I don't have that I might recommend, I'll have it in the description. And let me know what you thought of the video and if it was helpful. See you in the next video.